Okay, guys, listen, um, you know, it was Amsterdam a few years ago, which I'll mention about 100 people. It was Milan a couple of months after that or whatever. But last February, we were in Stockholm. Mm -hmm. And you had the album finished, and it was looking good. Things were always looking good. Had you any idea what was about to be unleashed with the success of the album one month later, March 29? Or did you kind of say, yeah, I expected that? <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. I had, like, the week before the album came out, we... I just like, I kind of kept it to myself for a while, and then after a while I was like, Phineas, 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 I'm really scared. <laughs> and I came <laughs> up to him, I was like, I, I, I don't, because I had no clue. I was like, I have no idea if people are going to like this, if they're going to hate it, if I'm going to like it after it's out, if I'm going to hate it. And um, I was actually really worried about it, and the day before it came out, I remember saying I didn't want to put it out. because. <laughs> Because I did like it and I didn't want to ruin it. I was like, I'm not trying to ruin this album. I remember like I th album. the thought that I had before the album came out was that up until the album's release, I felt that pretty much the only people who had listened to our music were people who wanted to listen to our music. And I felt that the album was was going to come out with enough yeah, press behind it yeah. that I was worried that people who were, were <laughs> predisposed negatively toward that would like listen to it to not like it kind of a, you know, thing were going to hear it. And so that... That flipped me out because I, I think ultimately you you kind of just want to yeah. make music for people that want you to make music, not for for haters. But sure, it's, it's great but that people have liked it. It's isn't really it awesome. Brilliant that the two of you can do it in the exact way you want to do it without having to count out to anybody in the industry at all. It's kind of you become a different idea of what a pop star can be. In other words, entirely you've conquered the world of music by doing everything you're not supposed to do, <laughs> but doing everything you want to do. You're yourself. I guess. I mean, we didn't try to be. I think that's why it worked. Like we weren't, we were never like, let's do all the things that people don't want us to let's do. Do everything wrong. Yeah, we we, <laughs> and it's funny. I was saying this in an interview a while ago that like, there's kind of this like, title on my name that's kind of like, you know, the artist, the anti-pop or the anti-blank or she's breaking all the rules. Da, da, da. I'm like, when? <laughs> like when was I? When was I doing that? <laughs> I don't remember saying to somebody like, oh, I'm not. I'm not gonna do that normal, you know? It's like fucking, I wanted to make what I wanted to make and that was it, period. The other funny thing about it is that because we did all this stuff, you know, in a very a very small and, and intimate way, making the album, just the two of us in a bedroom, essentially, I, I had this hope that it would, if it was a success, which it has been, that it would make people feel more willing to, to you know, put more faith in artists and really let artists just execute their own visions and not over A and R projects. As opposed to the business taking control. And right. I I, I hope that they would use us as an example of why that was allowed. And instead, they've just decided that we're an anomaly, <laughs> <laughs> and that sucks. <laughs> well, look, hold on. In terms of actually just making the music, I mean, yeah. you've gone off to your own house, but the room is still there. <laughs> you, the room is still there where you make your music and where you have made your music in the past, right? I mean, you have a chart on the wall where you used to show how high you were getting, mm -hmm. and you're right there about progress. And yeah. You sit in the bed and you yeah. do whatever. Uh -huh. So, I mean, it's all very important that that's the way it should be. Yeah, I think it was... Um very vital <laughs> to what we were what we needed to do um, I think it was like we, it would not have worked if we were you know being forced to work with a bunch of other producers and other songwriters and or it, even, it literally wouldn't yeah. work it wouldn't have worked at all at all or at even all. farther away from each other I yeah like we were just like always coming in and bothering each other and yeah. making music yeah and like even though Phineas like he has a house now and you know, we don't we don't really necessarily use that room anymore. It's still there, and it doesn't it doesn't mean we can't work together in his new house, you know, or on the road or whatever. But like for that time, it was exactly what we needed to do. I'm also like 99 percent sure that I'll probably move back in with Billy in the couple weeks of like really working on the next yeah. record. I'm sure whenever we knuckle down and like finish that record, we'll just be working such long hours we'll have okay, to be well, sleeping. Okay, well hold on, that's what I want to talk place. about because last weekend like you took over Leeds, you took over wherever other festivals you were doing in England. It was Moscow, it was St. Petersburg, it's mm -hmm. coming up to Milan, it's coming up to whatever else, uh, Barcelona, and yeah. then there's a bunch of dates in America from Las Vegas to Tulsa, etc. Yeah. And it's all completely mad. <laughs> You're not going to stay on the road. You do have to give yourself time <laughs> off to get a second album together. Do we? Is that... Well, I, I think you do. So Dave says we have to that? take time do off, Do you Mom? write on the road? The, 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 the two of you write on the road? Um, he has been writing on the road because he has to put out a new EP. Um, and I've just been like being like, you know what? Go do that. He's like, do you want to watch Harry Potter on the plane? And I'm like... 
Do your work. <laughs> we <laughs> finish our shit. We have been able to to work on the road. Usually it's yeah. Compar- we did like wish we were gay on the road and stuff. And we did uh, bury a friend we did bury on a friend tour. On the road. I think you know ultimately our touring situation is is posh enough that um, you know we uh, we have like studio setups in our green rooms and so there's a lot of availability to make music. It just depends on how inspired you feel. Sometimes when you have yes. a show day and you know you you're doing your meet and greet, you know, in Billy's case, you're doing your, your press, you're yeah. signing a million yeah. posters. Sometimes you like don't want to write a song that day. So, well, you know, some things can work. Off time, it's like, I don't want to be writing music on the off time that I have from music, you know? Yeah. So. It's tricky, but you know, we have, we have like a, a day in Berlin at the end of this, like next week we have a day, I think a week from today actually. And like we have a studio booked for that because we want to, you know? Okay. But this business of having a better time on the road or making it a bit more, <laughs> comfortable on the road or whatever I mean like when I saw you back in um, 2017 in Amsterdam yeah. the Fanning family were one twentieth of the audience the Fanning was family was a bigger crew than we were touring with at the time <laughs> True, you actually. had more family members there than we had crew members <laughs> okay but then it was like it was whatever it was it was Milan a few months yeah. later and the same kind of story yeah. that was the time we met Alfonso Caram was there yeah yeah mm-hmm. and then cool. you had your song inspired by Ron right Ron. so like and then there was Stock Column which was getting a lot bigger now yeah. all of that thing right now before a tour, Billy, do you feel, oh, I don't want to do this. But once you're on the t- <laughs> no, hold on. But once you're on the tour, it's cool. It's thinking about it beforehand. Um, it's too big, The too thinking much. about it is, like, the most tormenting and torturous yeah. thing ever. Talks I think it. this European tour actually was, like, the only one that I didn't dread. <laughs> um, Finney's might have dreaded it. But I, but Finney's has a girlfriend, so I get <laughs> that. Um, but, no, I've kind of, like... It kind of it kind of sabotaged me for a while because like I had these amazing tours planned and these amazing shows planned and I was like fuck that I don't want to go like I don't want to go and then I just kept going you know and and being fine when I'm there but but yeah the, the you it, you agree to them and when you agree to them it seems like a good idea and that's like six barely. months away you're like well okay six yeah. months from now and, and then, then six months comes up and you go really oh, fast wow. six months yeah. hits you really quickly course, yeah. and then and then it sort of doesn't stop so it is we are conscious of it and i think the main thing is we want to make sure that we really appreciate it and value it the entire time we're doing it so the way we're approaching 2020 is we're we're doing a lot of regions and a lot of territories we're yeah. just doing shorter runs yeah. yeah this year we i feel like we've done like several five week runs we do shows you know like each weekend we get it's easy to get fatigued and so next year we're doing these like three week just like 21 days out and then we come home for like a month and then maybe another three weeks and i I think that's going to be much more like easy to sustain and to enjoy while we're doing it and then like my hope is that we won't get sick of it you know okay get sick of it but i mean what's happened in the last three or four months is just quite astonishing so the fame thing is one thing the attention thing that you might have often wanted in your life you don't necessarily want the fame thing do you um i do (laughs) i love fame (laughs) i didn't for a while there was a period where I was fully miserable and did not want it and was mad that I had it and wish I could change it and I couldn't and the fact that I couldn't was like it was I I was in a really bad place for a while like if I'm honest with you just wasn't in a good place and I wasn't happy and I didn't think any of this was fun and I didn't like making music at the time and I was like I don't want to make music I don't enjoy it I don't even like and it was like so, it's crazy to think about that because I was, it was genuinely that. Yeah. Like I was genuinely like, I don't like this. I don't want to do it. And um, I don't know what happened. I think it just kind of, I stopped being overworked and I started playing venues where I felt safer and where there was, you know, now we have a way bigger crew and like we're not doing all of it on our, on our own and it's all really stressful and we're staying in nicer hotels and like we have nicer buses and we have better food and like all these little things. We're sleeping things. more too. We're sleeping good. more and like we have all these little things that have just like the improved. Sh- the show itself too is now like a- almost a hundred percent like just songs we can't wait to play every day yeah and that, so true you know yeah. that was like when when we put the ep out we really liked the ep especially like to me i loved i don't want to be you anymore we both loved copycat and you know the issue was that we were doing headlining shows off of like a, a eight song ep so we were playing every song we'd ever put out yeah, no. which just means in our case that there were like a lot of ballads there were a lot of slow sad songs because we'd never done shows we didn't know what it was like so we didn't make songs that we were going to perform like and have fun to yeah of course you know um but when we made the album what about fame though 
I love fame. fame is, <laughs> there are very, very, very shitty aspects to fame. Horrible threats, that I wish. Security threats. Yeah, stuff. security Terrible. threats. I might fucking yeah. die. I don't know. Who knows? But I like it a lot. Yeah, but I mean, like, there's a level of fire. fame that you can bring <laughs> Zoe and your friends on the road, right? Yeah, I can bring Zoe and my friends on the road. And that's a big difference. Um, yeah, it made a big difference on that tour. Um, I think this tour, like, I didn't bring anybody, but I think, like, our, our crew is just filled with people that I just, like, genuinely like. And yeah. that's really, really important. Yeah, you our know? guitar tech, Trevor, is hilarious Fuck and wonderful. Yeah, uh, uh, our monitor tech, Salim, is great. Um, we have our Laura Ramsey, Laura our day-to-day, is yeah. really fun. Well, She's The funny here. thing is, like, if people talk about role models and things, which you don't have to be and you don't have to do or whatever, but, like, when you talk about being not in a good place between the ages of 13 and 16, maybe, yeah. when you were starting off being very True. famous, and when you, like, were doing probably Lee at the time and yeah. helping her yeah. as well, yeah. when all that was happening, you were not a happy person. No. And that's very important for an awful lot of people, and a lot of the people who relate to you, you must get that. You must think, God, yeah. do I have a responsibility here? Or do you ever think of that? Maybe that could be the end of you if you start thinking stupid <laughs> things like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, I think that it's it's fucking hard to like deal with. It's really hard to maneuver this, you know. Yeah. And like I, I struggled with it for three years, like, and only, I want to say like two or three months ago, I started to enjoy it and like started to see how good it was. And the thing is, it's not just because of my mental, like, that I was so miserable. We were really being overworked. We weren't, we didn't have a good schedule. Like, we didn't have enough off time planned. We had too many, like, all these things were just, like, not good yeah. Yeah. for my brain. And yeah. on top of that, I was depressed. And uh, Yeah. I would also say that, like, from 13 to 16 in my life, I was not famous whatsoever and not overworked at all. And I was still... I was still pretty miserable and anxious the whole time. Yeah. I think, th- I think pretty, 13, 13 to 16 is a kind of a rough age. <laughs> it's pretty tough to just like be going so through that true. hormonal place. And, you and know. I was dealing with being 13 to 16 and had fame on my back. Like, geez. Okay, but hold on. Ex- explain something like, hold on. You have to make a thing. Okay, you're doing your dance. The dance teacher says, give me some music. You give her a <laughs> yes. song. You give, yes. them, you give him, or is, is it a him or a her? I don't it's know. a him. Okay, it's a him. So you, you give him Fred. this song. And you put it up on SoundCloud rather than deliver it into his letterbox or whatever. <laughs> Suddenly a thousand people hear it. Now you're yeah. walking home knowing that a thousand people have heard it. She's in Starbucks, How actually. How good a feeling was that? <laughs> Did you feel great that day? It was crazy. Time? That was a, like the most beautiful moment. He called me and I was at Starbucks like uh, in like an hour break that I had between a couple classes and another couple classes. And I was sitting in Starbucks with my, I was just saying, I was drinking like some stupid hibiscus, whatever the fuck. And <laughs> a very, very hibiscus, Yeah, right? very, very hibiscus or strawberry or whatever You're drinking a pinkity drinkity. <laughs> <laughs> and Phineas called me and he was like, dude, Ocean Eyes got a thousand plays. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? And I couldn't. I actually couldn't believe it. And I looked at SoundCloud and it said like 1,000, like 32 or something. And I like jumped around. It was really there. fast. We didn't know a thousand people at the time. No, it was so, so I'm pretty cool. sure the effect of that was the same as the three billion now. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, yeah, a hundred percent. No, the seriously. the best part. I it's always. The same feeling. I genuinely feel bad for people that really have like a, a a viral sensation overnight because it makes you so nut. Like if if we'd woken yeah, up and we'd so had true. ten million views, we we for the whole rest of our career it would have been like we would have been referencing that yeah. incredible number and Same instead totally instead it was so gradual that like we had a thousand and we were like oh my god it's amazing and then i remember it was amazing when we got to 10,000 and we we're like wow i can't believe we got to 10,000 and then 20,000 was crazy and then i remember we got to 100,000 and it was like w- i couldn't even believe it had 100,000 yeah. and it's just you know it's just great yeah. because that's yeah. how you should live your life you should appreciate you know the, the gradual but growth. But isn't this one of the things about it all? Like, you yeah. never really, as opposed to a lot of people, went looking for it. You never did X Factor no. this or no, sort no. of America's Got Talent that no, or ew, all no. our Nickelodeon, the other thing no. too. It was all kind of, Ugh. I hate to use it, well, but I use it organic. And even in, well, and <laughs> yeah, even in signing, you know, the, our manager, Danny, has been our same manager since. I, I was talking to him about a band I was in in high school called The Slightlies, and he was very kind and respectful to me about my band. And then, you know, we needed so much help right away because labels started approaching us. And yeah. he was very respectful and helpful. And us he's meaning who? You and me. Oh, oh yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, he's 
uh, his value system is aligned with our value system and you know Billy ultimately signed with a label that we felt would give her creative control of her career yeah. and was excited about the vision and wasn't trying to turn Billy into something that she wasn't it was trying to show the world well, we who met Billy with a was a lot of a lot of labels and booking agents and stuff and yeah. and it was not like an impulsive thing at all yeah. it took a long time and like it was a lot of meetings and but you also met with a lot of producery types and you realized this these guys true. are just too old and they don't know what they're doing there. Right. and you're better off making an album where you made Ocean Eyes because you know the whole thing you're better off doing the bedroom thing in terms of making music all of those things we met with a lot of producers who I have a lot of respect and admiration for and Billy and I are both huge fans of music and so a lot of the time we were meeting with people who had made things that we were genuine like fans of for years uh, prior I just feel that when you're trying to make something unique sometimes you have to do that alone instead of work with someone who's made something that you already love I think yeah. I think to be truly unique you kind of have to branch out on your own you know and what about the whole idea like of the way it all builds up and in terms of Instagram this and blah blah that like you know you're careful on social media use it as a marketing tool if you like yeah. for you know, not a show off lifestyle kind of thing is that a conscious thing um I think people just I mean I, I've, I've made huge mistakes about social media I've said too much I've I've in the past in the past yeah I've said too much I've said the wrong thing I've you know been the little emotional teenager that I was like and I mean it's funny because it's like I grew up with the internet and the internet was where you posted your feelings your feelings or the things you thought were cool or like whatever yeah. and then it was weird because it was like the same thing but now like thousands of people were looking at it and so then I was suddenly getting dragged for something I said about like they're like this is mean and Whatever like, kind of what? thing Billy was saying is like, we still follow all of our friends that we grew that up with that have, you know, a hundred followers, like, whatever. They're saying all the same like stuff. We're, it's not like it's not racist. It's not racist no. shit. And it's like, just emotional. It's like no, you it's just casually like, go like, ugh, I want to die. No, and people yeah, like flip like, out. This is so fucked up. But I mean, anytime you've ever mentioned like anything in terms of self-harm or depression or synesthesia. By the way, you're orange. You're, you're an orange. I am, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> and a triangle. Or mild Tourette's and all these kind of things. You realize <laughs> they are important and they really talk to people. I do realize. Yeah. Um, and I didn't... Oh, no. Nah. Hell no. There's wasps. <laughs> um... <laughs> Fuck that. Um, no, I, I didn't I didn't say them to do that. No. But I realize it now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, and it's funny because, like, the only reason I open up about Tourette's and having Tourette's is, like, because the fans who I love <coughs> and who, like, are so precious and so sweet to me and, like, so funny, like, made... <laughs> I mean, they were funny. It was these, like, compilation videos of me ticking. And they yeah. didn't know that it was Tourette's. They just were like, oh, look, Billy making funny faces. And they post, and it was, like, all over the internet. And I was like, I'm, I'm going to tell them because I feel like they'd want to know, you know? Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be making fun of somebody's thing that they... Asperger's. You know, their yeah. <laughs> you know, their, like, issue that they can't actually change. And then it turns out to be an issue, you know, when I just thought it was them being whatever. What about the amount of things your parents have done to help you down through the years? And not least, horses. <laughs> the horses situation. I mean, have you ridden Jackie O? Have you bought Jackie O? Jackie O. Oh, my God. Um, no, I have not. She's a, she's a school horse, so she's, like, owned by the stable. Um, and she's, she was this horse that, like, I, I grew up, like, working at this stable and... Um, had like zero money at all so it was the only way I could pay for like riding lessons and whatever and um, and she was like a horse that I rode a couple of times in lessons and I just thought she was so pretty and she was so sweet and I, I was 12 you know and yeah. I just like had this like connection with her my little horse girl like 12 year old self and then I quit because of a lot of reasons no one is taking me seriously like no matter what you do if you are poor you can't like of course. There's nothing you can yeah. do, and I couldn't take it. I literally couldn't take the it. The horse, the equine world is a very affluent oh, yeah. community. Yeah, oh, yeah. A lot of rich, rich people. Yeah. But that horse is, like, owned by someone else, like, that yeah. loves her. And, like, I know people that, like, ride her. It's like, she's not my horse. And I just in terms pretty. of the fashion side of all of it, I mean, again, it's entirely you. You do what you want to do. One of the big things of all was that, you know, maybe you used to look in a mirror and didn't like the look of yourself or whatever, and you uh -huh. say all of these things. But now... It means that there's nobody going to judge anything of who you are except that you wear these sort of kind of outre clothes as opposed to, say, a Rihanna's or any of these people. 
Is that it? Like, it's just, you just are who you are. I, I mean, I am who I am, but everyone's still got something to say. No matter what I do, everyone's going to say something about it, which is weird. They are. But it's usually pretty good. Is the one thing it I have to really say, sorry, I do want to go back to the age of seven about one thing, because you did an audition for something. Did you really sing Happiness is a Warm Gun? I did. By the be- what? It's a really? great song. I I that's happiness a brilliant song, but I'm just saying, my, what? It um, was like, what was it? It was like a talent show. It's like, what? How, I don't remember. I was, was like six or homeschooled seven. talent show. It was a homeschooled yeah. talent show, and they sang Happiness is a Warm Gun. The whole version. Like, I don't know why they let me sing the whole version. It's so long. And you say, like, Mother Superior jumped the gun ten times, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I sang it ten times. Patrick, uh, Patrick, our dad, was her accompanist on yeah, piano. He, he sang the backing vocal, Bang Bang Shoot Shoots. He did. Yeah, bang, oh, really? Bang, oh, yeah, shoot, right. Yeah, 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 exactly. He sang all those. Pretty good. Okay, but look, finally, I mean, obviously this tour is going on. There's always dates now. Seriously, is there anything mentioned about a next album? Or a... Like anything at all together? Do you if write on the road? If we say anything, yeah, no, there's yeah. gonna be like Billy Eilish is working on her next album. Yeah, it's coming out true. soon. Yeah. I literally already saw that. I was like, right. I didn't even <laughs> say that. <laughs> um, all I will say, on that behalf, is that we don't, we don't want there to be a long period between no. albums. No. I don't like it when people take four hour, four four years right. between their first yeah. and second record. We want to keep feeding people. We just want to make sure it that it worked for Frank Ocean though. It did. Blonde is amazing. But we we want to we want to put out stuff we're really proud of, and as as soon as we have stuff ready to put out that we're really proud of, it'll it'll come out for sure. Okay, well, Phineas, thank you so much indeed, and Billy, thank you so much as thank well. It's been a real so pleasure. Much. Enjoy the road. If you don't, you're a bit silly. Thanks. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thanks, Dave. Thank you very much. Thank you.